If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. So as I do regularly, I uh, try to take a list of questions from the comments and I make a video about it, I'll, you know, a couple times a month, once a month. Just the other day, I got a question that asked, is it legal to dump your gray water at the BLM? No, not legal at all. If you have an RV and you have a gray water tank, you cannot open up the valve to your gray water tank and dump it on the ground. And the reason is, think about what you put down your sink. You know, it's not just the shower water we're talking about. We're talking about that sink water. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, I don't put anything down the sink. You know, I take all of my sink water and I put it down the toilet in my black water tank. And that's great, but you still can't dump it because the BLM doesn't know the difference. They just see someone dumping their gray water tank onto the ground and assume it's bad. But here's the thing. Imagine what you're putting down this, that, that sink. Bleach water. People regularly dump bleach water down the sink, don't even realize it. Uh, food particles, coffee, so sometimes you get those grounds down the sink, and non-biodegradable soap goes down the sink also. So now imagine what happens, is the raccoon smells all that food, ooh, food, and he comes running over, and he eats all this food that's contaminated with bleach and other poisonous chemicals. Not to mention, these poisonous chemicals can also kill the, the faunage. It's generally accepted. I've not seen any national forest say you cannot take a shower in the BLM. So what you can do is you get a shower tent, but, the only, but then you have to use biodegradable soap. Now, uh, a little quick tip here. Ivory soap that you buy at the store, just ivory soap, is biodegradable, completely natural, and so that's what we use. That way you don't have to go out and buy all these camping soaps. Rainwater. People ask if we collect rainwater, and I've actually, yeah, I've showed you a lot that we've collected rainwater. As a matter of fact, uh, we started collecting rainwater when we were in South Dakota. It rained. It was only supposed to rain for a couple hours, and it stopped, but it rained for several days, and it ended up that the ground was so saturated, we were afraid to move the, the truck in fear that we would get stuck. And it was a very reasonable fear because everybody who tried to move ended up having to get a tow truck. So we just stayed put for two weeks straight. The limiting factor we had was water. So we collected rainwater. Out there in the Badlands, there was no trees or anything. So whatever fell down on top of the camper was pretty clean. Once the, the top of the camper washed away, you know, the dirt from the top of the camper, that water was pretty clean. So we were able to use it for everything, drinking water. We use our Berkey water filtration system to purify our, our drinking water. Well, out here in the forest, though, all that rain hits the, the trees and the dirt, and so you never get clean water when you're collecting rainwater out here in the forest. So what you got to do is pre-filter. We, uh, we have this filter that we use. Buy it at Walmart. I think it's, I think it's $40. And, you can buy the, and it's called a household water filter. Pretty cheap, and it plugs right into a hose system. You can put hoses right on it. Works great. And you buy these little charcoal filters, uh, paper charcoal filters. They don't purify, so don't drink water from this. You need a purification system. We filter our rain collection water uh, so we can use it for showers and, and different things. The other thing that we do quite frequently is anytime there's a pond or, or stream, we'll collect the stream water for, for laundry. And so again, we use the pre-filter. But anytime you take it out of the pond, that pre-filter is still going to leave a lot of yucky bacteria behind that I don't want on my clothes. So what I do is I filter it twice, actually. The first time I just run it through the filter, let it clean the particulates out. It's still a little dingy, but, but pretty clean. And then uh, I, I put a little bit of bleach in the water, and then I run it through the filter a second time. Now, I get this question a lot. Don't you get hot in that camper? Uh, you don't have air conditioning. What do you do without air conditioning? Well, we don't have air conditioning. And no, we don't get that hot in the camper. Or even outside the camper. But this shade, I don't think people realize how much shade actually keeps things cool. Uh, for example, when we were in the Badlands, it did get pretty hot. It was in the 90s the whole time we were there after it stopped raining, of course. It was, it was in the 90s. 
and boy you can really feel it now in the camper it's not so bad the camper is white so it reflects a lot of that sunlight is what I'm gathering and then we just run a little window fan and we stay quite nice in there but outside it was obviously very hot we actually got pretty suntanned then it actually kind of worried me because we were stuck and we didn't have any uh, sun suntan lotion so we, we got a little bit of sun that I was not happy about after we were able to leave the Badlands we went 140 miles west in South Dakota to the Black Hills still the temperature was 90 degrees but under the trees with this nice cool breeze you don't even notice the temperature you don't sweat a lot of course you got to stay very hydrated now there again in the Badlands in South Dakota it's not quite as much humidity as it's down here in Florida and Missouri so humidity makes a big difference but I suggest instead of going up in the mountains and down into the desert and running all over the place if you want to stay cool just get yourself in the shade uh, that way you don't have to have air conditioning generator somebody asked about my generator I love my generator it's a champion 2000 watt inverter generator it is not one of these really noisy construction generators it's, it's specifically designed for tailgating and camping be quiet you know it's very quiet and so you can actually sit next to it and still have a conversation and this generator is about five hundred dollars it holds one gallon of gas and it runs about nine hours on that gallon of gas uh, in low now remember there's a high low speed and most of your operation is going to run on on low it really is you know we just run our battery charger on it anytime there's an, a, a power surge to it like when the if I have the refrigerator plugged into it, it it'll ramp up on its own and it comes back down that just knows that the refrigerator kicked on the other question that came with that was how much gas do I carry uh, well with only running at six hours a day I carry 10 gallons of gas it lasts 14 days it, it works out perfectly thanks for watching click like if you like video and happy travels